Good evening, everybody. How do you hear me back there on the beat on the beach? The beach blanket bingo back there is good. You need it up more? We're about five minutes, five minutes till we get the show on the road. We've got a few things to go. I'm glad you can hear me at the back there now. So just take a few minutes to get settled in. We've got to line up our grads and get them all ready to come out. And uh, the program's going to get ready to start here right away. So I guess it's, a, it's a about time to start our evening. Um, our grads requested that we start at, at 2020 for the grad of 2020. So they, uh, here we're going to get our program on the, on the road. The Turtle Mountain School Division operates on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe and the Dene people, or Dakota people, and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. Turtle Mountain School Division respects the treaties that were made on this territory. Welcome everyone to Boise Maine School's first that I know of outdoor graduation, grad of 2020. Kind of interesting, when I was looking at this a little bit, I realized that this is the group that was born on 9-11 and had to work through that, and now they've been faced with another challenge, so I think that they will be ready to face many more challenges as they move on. Um, my name is Alan Hicks. I'm the VP here at Boys of Ain School, and I will kind of be the MC for this wonderful evening event. Um, also on stage with me, helping me pass out the uh, diplomas and other awards, will be our principal, Stephanie Emberley. Before we begin, just a few housekeeping items because we all know about rules and those kind of things. I see people have figured out our parking sequences and our people sitting down up front. Um, you can remain inside or you can stand on the left side of your vehicle because therefore your left side of the vehicle makes your, your appropriate buffer zone. Washroom for parents will be around east side of the school and into the old uh, entrance by the cafeteria. And their ladies are the first door and then the gentlemen are down the hall at the end of the hall. We'd ask you to stay on the main floor as they're stripping floors upstairs. Um, I think we're going to be okay because the rain cooled it off. If you really feel the need to start your vehicle for a while for AC, we'd appreciate it just be a few short stint. Um, I kind of made this uh, announcement when it was a lot warmer this afternoon. Um, an exciting day. It always has just an incredible energy. And I thank you all for working through the challenges that we've had to face in these last few months and the years ahead that got it to us, us to this point. Um, I'd like to please have you stand and for the grad processional and then remain standing as we'll be playing O Canada right after that.
we now ask the grads to stand and join the rest of us in standing at attention for O Canada. for some thank yous. Uh, as you can imagine, putting on a grad or an event like this is no easy task and uh, as you can also imagine, this year was extremely challenging and uh, just put, kind of put a bit of a test to us. The details of this, uh, this event would not have happened without our great sponsorship and this reminds me why I love this town. They never, it never fails to deliver. As you see on your program, we'd like to thank the Boys of Maine Chamber of Commerce, Sunrise Credit Union, the RM of Boys of Maine Morton, Boundary Co-op, the UCT Club of Boys of Maine, Lions Club of Boys of Maine, Boys of Maine Bakery, Boys of Maine Recorder, and Casey Gunther Designs. Um, all made nice donations for us to be able to put this on and the extra cost that came through putting on an outdoor event. Absolutely. Parents, again, thank you for many years of support. Students, for your hard work and the challenges you got through. And a big thanks to our parent grad committee for all your help. Sonia Harper, Sharon Strain, Mary and David Ard, Jim Harmon, Paula Hussman, Monique Hallett, Pam Melmoth, Brandy Braun, and Krista Klein for helping organize some things about the fireworks. Thank you very much. And it was also an interesting cast. We're out here, uh, also lots of other parents that are out here to help put up uh, this, this display here and decorate everything and make everything look uh, uh, very nice in, a, in the trying circumstances that we have. Um, I would now like to call on greetings from our school division. Uh, Mr. Tim Daruk, the Turtle Mountain Superintendent. Good evening everyone. Well the clouds have parted and uh, cooled things down nicely. That little bit of rain we got earlier so this is really nice. It's an exciting time of year. I'm very pleased to congratulate our Boys of Ain School graduates today. There are many people who are very proud of you, all of you, and I hope you take great pride in what you've accomplished graduating from high school. It's been an interesting spring for all of us and we've had to adapt in various ways. Uh, graduates, we talk a lot in education about the need for students to be resilient, to have strong work ethic, to be adaptable, and to be goal-oriented. Given the way the last several months of your grade 12 year have unfolded, I believe you've demonstrated all of the above. As you carry forward, I hope you will each continue to call upon these skills in whatever you pursue. You may have a clear plan for what's next, or you may not be 100% sure, maybe you have a few possibilities in mind. Whatever the case, while goals are important and they help us to remain focused, we must also remember to take things one day at a time. We also know this is a time when your paths will diverge. 
you will go your own way and you must set your path for yourself and figure it out. This can be scary, but it can also be very exciting. You will have great accomplishments along the way and you will also make mistakes. We all do. Know that this is okay and you will learn from them. When we look around today, we can see at least a portion of the people, the family, the friends who are in your corner. I hope you will stay connected. Lean on each other when you need to, and also be the shoulder for someone to lean on you when they need it. Congratulations to you once again, graduates. Be proud of yourselves. We're all very proud of you. Thank you. And now for greetings from our school board, uh, board of trustees, Mrs. Karen Weir. On behalf of the Churl Mountain School Division Board of Trustees, I'd like to congratulate the class of 2020. And I just wanna say that you can't change the past. The future is yet to be written. And the only thing you really have control over is what you choose to do next. All the steps in your life have brought you here. They are your choices that you have made. So whatever the next step in your life is, choose wisely. Congratulations. Now we'll move on to the grad presentations of diplomas. I'd like to call up Carson Ard. Carson will be... Carson received the Bernard Fast and the Boys of Maine Health Auxiliary Scholarship. Ariana Azoni. Ariana will be recognized for receiving the highest mark in the pre-calc 40S class with a mark of 99%. Ruth Baker. Ruth receives the Barbara Dick Scholarship and the Band Directors Award. Regan Barwick. Regan receives the WR Barefoot Award and the Barb Sharp Scholarship. Jersey Braun Racine. I would now like to call up Ken Pringle and Krista Klein to provide the toast to the grads.
not to. Okay. Good evening, teachers, grads, families, and friends. We're honored to be giving the toast to this amazing group of young adults today. Grads, today you are making history. You've struggled through 12 years of formal education and survived, which is a feat in itself, but perhaps creating history at the same time. You came into the world as infants in the fallout of 9-11, and now you're heading out into the world as adults during COVID and the drastic life changes it's created for us. Yet here you are, and you're stronger for it and up to whatever challenges life may bring you. Thirteen years ago, 20 of our eager young children started their school journey together in Boys Bay Kindergarten, and seven started in Minto. Along the way, we had students move away or leave, and some moved to town and join our class. Minto students joined Boys Bay for their high school years, and you also welcomed exchange students from around the world. Together, you guys are the class of 2020. You are a class full of talent and potential. Musicians, singers, artists, athletes, scholars, computer programmers, and more. But what you may not realize is how well respected you've been by your teachers, peers, coaches, and community members. They say it takes a village to raise a child, and boy are you lucky to have the village you have. You have not done this alone, and we as parents can't, aren't the reason that you're here either. Your success has involved employers, coaches, group leaders, churches, and a huge part of your success until now has been your mentors along the way. You guys have always been the class that chose to get along with one another. You chose to volunteer. You chose to respect each other for the individuals that you are. You've always respected teachers, even though you may not have enjoyed the class or the content. But collectively, you've all found a way to make our school a better place not only for your fellow students, but for the teachers as well. Even on the days that we as parents couldn't ship you off to school fast enough, the teachers saw potential when we some days couldn't. We want to take a moment to show our respect to the teachers of Boys Vane School for not only teaching the academics, but also making our kids better people along the way. For the countless hours of tutoring, coaching, supervising, and teaching life lessons long beyond the school day, we are grateful to you for not only being their teacher, but also their mentor and friend. The relationship the kids have built with you guys will last a lifetime. Standing up here today, standing up here today, we have many of the same feelings that we did dropping you off for the first day of kindergarten. Will they make friends? Will they get in trouble? Will they speak up if they need something? Will they be able to do the work? Will they miss us? Whether you're five or 18, we still have these fears and questions. We know the magnitude of this milestone and we know what follows. But we've seen you grow up. We've seen you make mistakes, celebrate successes and cry over failures. This has all prepared you for the next steps you will take in life. You will fail and you will succeed. You will find yourself in a tough spot once in a while, but you'll have each other's backs when you do. You will make new friends and even though you may not realize it yet, Yes, you will miss us, even if it's only the home-cooked meals you miss. The word graduation has so much more meaning behind it than we realize. Yes, it's a celebration of hard work over a long period of time, but it's also an ending, a beginning, and it's growing, discovering, and leaving. We've taken some time to write what graduation means to us parents as we send you off to the next adventure. G is for great. Great things are accomplished by not only acting, but also dreaming, not only planning, but also believing in yourself. It is also for grateful, as you will be when your first call is home broke and needing more money. R is for remember. Remember that you always have a choice, no matter what the situation. You may also have the saying, make good choices, drilled into your head by now. Also, remember to call your mom once in a while. A is for amazing. Surround yourself with people who remind you how amazing you are and avoid the ones who don't. D is for do it. If you are given the opportunity to travel or do something out of your comfort zone, take it. 
For those of you who missed out on a traveling opportunity to Europe this year, I really hope you all get the opportunity again to travel. U. U is for use. Some of you may not know this, but another use for your phone is as an alarm clock. For those of you who have been sleeping to 11, you may want to check out this feature. A is for all. This week will probably be the last time you are all together as one group. You will all take different paths and get to your destinations at different times. And that's okay, because life is not a race. But, <laughs> T is for 10. 10 years from now, if you're still playing beer pong, you guys, you're on the wrong path. I, in the most challenging of times, and there will be some, know that you have a voice and the power to change things always. Oh, only spend what you have. Being broke in college or anywhere after high school is a rite of passage. Celebrate ramen noodles and dorm food. One day you'll look back and smile on these days. And N, now that we are pushing you out into the real world, we will let you in on a little secret. We were mostly just winging it as parents, and you will find that often you have to fake it till you make it. But we've done something right because we're all here today celebrating. Along the way, we've learned many things from you, our children. We've learned that you developed an amazing moral compass. You know how to treat people with kindness. You know how to, you have boundaries, but you still know how to have fun with your friends. You know how to stay grounded and be humble. You know that time spent with grandparents is never wasted. You know that staying angry or hurt doesn't make you feel better. You forgave people and moved on. We learned that you're much smarter than us in so many areas. In closing, we want to remind you of a couple things. Success is not measured by your job, your education, how much money you have, or the car you drive. Success is determined by who you are, how you treat others, and how you lead your life. Always choose to be kind. Remember, there's no place like home. You'll always have a, a family anxiously awaiting your next visit, even if your siblings take over your closet or your room is turned into the new office. Tonight, of all things, grad, take time to think how lucky you are to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard. We want to thank the grad class for giving us the honor of representing the parents of the class of 2020. We wish you all the best luck in the future. Thanks, Ken and Krista. Now moving on with our grads, I'd like to call up Shea Canada. <laughs> Kyla Cathcart. Austin Klein. Tanner Klein. Tanner Klein will be receiving the Sally Hoppy the MNP, the UCT, Boys and Men Minor Hockey, and was also recognized as the Kinsman's Outstanding Citizen this year. <laughs> Carson Downey Hayden.
I would now like to call on David Hussman and Austin Klein to give the toast to the parents. Dear family, guardians, and parents of grads, today is a big day for us students, and although today is celebrated for us, we would like to thank you guys for your dedication and support on helping us achieve what we reached today. Many of us would not be here if it hadn't had the constant motivation or nagging brought upon by you, <laughs> whether it be making sure we finished that project or that we studied for exams, it certainly paid off. Although many of us may go our separate ways, you guys have raised us into the men and we, women we are today. Today will be something many of us will remember for the rest of our lives. And we owe it to you, parents, for our success. And for that, we thank you. Thanks, gentlemen. Next grad, Tristan Fleming. Tristan is recognized for the following scholarships. The WR Bra Bra Barefoot Scholarship, Lions Club Scholarship, the Minto Legion, Western Art Trib, the Chown Centennial from the U of M Entrance Scholarship, and the Gertine Centennial Entrance Scholarship at U of M. Shea Gabre. Shea is recognized for high marks in Essential Math 40S with a 90%, comprehensive, comprehensive English 40S with a 94%. She receives the Ross George Scholarship, the Kinnett Scholarship, and the Sunrise Credit Union Scholarship. Jillian Gervin. Jillian will be receiving the Boys Bay Minor Hockey Scholarship. Sarah Hallett. Sarah is recognized for high marks in English Literature 40S with a 99%. She receives the Ab and Maisie Hicks Scholarship, the Boise Maine Health Center Scholarship, the Turtle Mountain Teachers Association Scholarship, Hazelwood Chemistry Award, the TMSD Social Justice Award, and the Doric Lodge Award. In addition to these accolades, she's also been given the Governor Board of Governors Entrance Scholarship at Bryan University, the Del Matter Wood 50th Anniversary Scholarship, the IBEW Local CFL Manitoba Council Scholarship, the Terry and Irene Penton Memorial Scholarship, and she will be joining the Lady Bobcats in Brandon whenever that comes to play this fall. Kyle Harmon. I'm going to ask Tanner Klein to join Kyle with the toast to the teachers. On behalf of the class of 2020, I'd like to take this time to thank all the teachers that were lucky enough to have us as their students. To thank them 
for putting up with talking during classes and for staying after school to help us the day before a test. Without all your hard work and dedication, we wouldn't be here receiving our diplomas on this flat deck trailer in the parking lot of the school. <laughs> but in all seriousness, the Boys Vane School staff has done a great job in making this social distancing as easy as possible on our students and that they have worked so hard to give us a day to celebrate the last 12 years of our lives. And for that, we are very thankful. Even though we may be frustrating and annoying, we are very, we are very thankful for everything you have taught us ever since our first days at Boys Van School. From bus evacuations and fire drills to multiplication and logarithms, we have definitely learned a lot between kindergarten and grade 12, even though at times we may not show it. Us students cannot begin to put into words how much teachers and staff mean to us, so let's all give a round of applause to the BCI staff. Thank you. Thank you, Tanner and Kyle. Now moving on, Ethan Harper. Ethan will be receiving the Westman Communications Scholarship and has also been recognized by the Boundary Co-op's Employee Scholarship Program. Aurora Holstein. Aurora will be receiving the Klaus Stelling Scholarship, the Lions Club Scholarship, the Sunrise Credit Union, as, long, as well as the Sue Broadfoot Scholarship, and has been awarded the Hazelwood Chemistry Award. <laughs> David Hussman. Aspen Knott. Paige Main. Paige has been awarded the, awarded the Boys of Maine Morton Foundation Scholarship along with the Boys of Maine Legion Award. I'd now like to call up the, the class reps, Sarah Hallett and Tristan Fleming. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Boys of Maine Schools graduating class of 2020, we would like to welcome all school administrators, teachers, staff, parents, and close family members attending our ceremony today. We would also like to welcome all extended family, friends, and community members supporting us as they watch the program online. We would like to start by thanking everyone who has supported us and helped us get to where we are today. To all teachers, school staff, and EAs, while managing your crazy schedules, you always remain committed to helping us grow. And to all parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, siblings and friends, you've put in countless hours supporting us and cheering us on as we achieved special milestones. To all members of our community, as well as local service groups and businesses, you've shown immense support towards our class throughout the years and have been an important part of our individual and group successes. On behalf of our class, we would like to say thank you. Over the course of our time here, we have grown from tiny kindergartners to independent young men and women. I have seen us all discover and devote ourselves to our passions, and although our interests may differ, we have all been committed to becoming better at what we love to do and what makes us happy. Despite the fact we may all be the closest of friends, we are a family. Families fight. Families don't always agree with one another, but they always have each other's backs in the end. 
We have been dreaming and talking about this day for years, and the day is finally here. We may not be having our typical graduation this year, so we might not be walking together in our caps and gowns through the gym and walking across the stage to receive our diplomas, but we are still graduating. We are still part of the global community of students wrapping up a chapter in our lives and starting a new one. Our dedication, determination, and commitment still remain true. The quiet hours you spend studying at home, the loss of sleep in order to finish an assignment you probably should have started way sooner than you did, and the tears just a few of us shed the night before our final pre-calc exam were all worth it. Graduation is not defined by a gown, a piece of paper, or a cap. Graduation is defined by your courage to take the next step towards your future. And I really do believe that each of you has shown immense courage over the past few months. Our class has always been very kind and accepting towards new people, making tr the transition to Boys Van from Minto or anywhere else very easy. It's hard to believe that I've only been in Boys Van for four years. It feels like our class has always been together. Even memories like Tyson and Carson Ard having some choice words with each other in grade two feel like my own because I've heard these stories so many times throughout high school. Boys Van School is a place of hard work and fun, although sometimes the two interfere with one another. I can't imagine that many other students were able to play hide and seek throughout the school for events such as Midnight Madness. I believe we are lucky to be able to go to school like Boys Van because we get to know every single person in our class. It makes graduation that much better when you're able to share it with a class full of friends. I had high expectations on how my grade 12 year was supposed to go, and like many others, I'm sure, it took me a while to comprehend all the changes that were made. In-person classes were canceled. Championship seasons were cut short or never started for some. Travel plans were postponed and the list goes on. During our at-home self-isolations, I realized how many things I took for granted back when things were normal. Things as simple as being able to see my friends every day, playing the sport that I love, and going to school were all things that slipped my mind as being a privilege. The saying, you don't know what you have until it's gone, started to make more sense to me. But I realized just a few weeks ago that instead of dwelling on the last few months of memories that we missed, we should focus on the past 13 years worth of memories that we gained. Memories like on the 100th day of kindergarten, when James brought his glass jar of 100 marbles for show and tell, but ended up dropping the jar and spilled all 100 marbles onto the floor. Memories like during one of our middle school HMAC classes, when Ethan microwaved a stick of butter with the foil still on it, causing it to catch on fire and causing all of us to burst out laughing. <laughs> As we grew up together, I realized more and more each year how thankful I was to have such kind and genuine classmates by my side each day. The memories we all made together here at school will last a lifetime, and that's a guarantee. Like the rest of the 2020 graduates around the world, our grade 12 experience has been interesting, to say the least. However, we were already used to change. In grade 11, while the high school was under renovation, we had classes all over the school for a few months. Geography was in the primary area, bio was on the stage, the teachers even had to give up their lounge for physics and chemistry. Our class has proved time and time again that we can get past obstacles and still make the best of our situation. This ability to overcome adversity will be valuable for life after high school as well. I'm sure that everyone here will have a bright and rewarding future ahead of them. To our fellow graduates, if we may give you any advice, it's to live in the moment. Do what you love and surround yourself with people who make you happy. This pandemic does not define who we are as individuals, and it most certainly does not define our futures. Remember the disappointments and hardships we felt this year as a class? Because we will, they will only help make us stronger and more resilient, in, resilient individuals in our futures. We know that each of you is capable of achieving great things, no matter the path you choose or the obstacles in your way, and we really do hope that you will be able to find success doing something you truly love. To all our classmates, you have worked extremely hard to get to this point in your lives, and we couldn't be prouder of all the accomplishments each of you have made. We are the class of 2020, and I don't think we'll ever forget this year or this day. Best of luck to you all, and congratulations on being part of Boys Bain School's graduating class of 2020. Thank you, Tristan and Sarah. Continuing on, Ethan Melma. Yeah. 
Aiden Pate. Tyson Pringle. Tyson will receive the Safe Grad Scholarship, the Boundary Co-op, Louise Scott Memorial, and the Boys of Maine Minor Hockey Scholarships as well. Madison Reichardt. Madison Strain. Madison receives the Don Marshall, the UCT Club, the Legion Auxiliary, and the Ag Quest of Minto scholarships this year. James Weeb. I now want to call on the Governor General's Award. This award is given to the graduating student with the highest academic record. This year, the award goes to Aurora Holstein. This next gentleman was lucky enough to teach these kids, I believe, in grade two and in grade six and again in grade nine and then some of them again in a couple few other high school classes. I'd like to call up Mr. Sheldon Weddick. Yeah, I definitely think he deserves some love. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and most importantly, grads. Uh, before I get started with my speech, Mrs. Moody asked that I extend her well wishes for this group. Mrs. Moody was the EA in my classroom in both grades two and grade six. Um, she wanted you to know how much she enjoyed her time with you all and sh how she has loved watching you grow up. Now for my part, this is not an easy speech for me to give. I am not a public speaker nor am I very good at publicly displaying emotions. So you're gonna have to forgive me. I'm gonna get emotional. It's gonna happen. It's gonna start early. <laughs> and you're just gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> you see, I've had many special students over the years, but I've never had an entire group influence me the way that this group has. You've always been more than my students. For six hours a day, you were my kids. Preparing for this speech has meant that I got to think back on the years we have spent together. Grade two, 
grade six, grades nine through 11 for many of you. I looked at the number of school days in a year, the hours we spent together, together, and I estimated that over the years, I was lucky enough to have taught you for approximately 5,700 hours. I've made a career out of teaching you. <laughs> I've watched you grow into strong, brilliant, kind, and determined young adults who I know are capable of anything. Every day you gave me something to smile about, but at the same time, wow, could you enrage me. <laughs> you caused me sleepless nights with worry when I knew you were dealing with something serious. And you made me proud over and over again. You made me proud. When asked about doing this speech, I thought there were a number of ways I could go about it. I could do what has always been done and give an inspirational quote and a final lesson. I could be quick and do just a simple group message. Or I could be long-winded and talk about each and every grad. Aurora and Jillian asked for the long-winded version. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you're all comfortable because I'm going to share with you a memory of each grad and I'm going to let you know that a lesson you taught me over the years. So I'll begin with Carson Ard. Carson, the lesson you taught me was that anyone can become a leader if given a chance. See, in grade two, Carson was a very, very timid little kid. He used to, he used to wear this blue sweater all the time. And he would chew on the sleeve of the sweater. <laughs> and by the end of the day, it was soaked. <laughs> And as he grew up, he still stayed a quiet, timid kid. Looking back, not many people would have thought that he would have become a leader. He was too quiet. But after two years of coaxing to, conf to finally convince him to play volleyball, you not only turned into a star on the court, but also a phenomenal leader who others admired and looked up to. Ruth, Ruth, I only ever got to teach you in one class. So my memory from, of you isn't from a teacher's perspective, but rather from an audience member's. Ruth shone both as an actress and a musician. I remember one particular Music Monday, Ruth had a solo, and as she sat there with her guitar, she took this big, long, nervous breath, and then she began to sing and you could immediately hear the passion in her voice that she had for music. So when Carson told me that Ruth was away at her BU audition, I thought back to that Music Monday, and I knew she was gonna ace that audition. And of course she did. Ruth, from all those stage performance, I learned about the strength it takes to put yourself out there like that. Regan, you taught me that if you have to do something, it's always worth putting a little extra effort into it. See, in grade six, Regan was incredibly slow and meticulous at making posters. And on one occasion, I just wanted the thing turned in. <laughs> she had spent almost the entire lunch hour meticulously putting spots of glitter on a poster. <laughs> and finally I told her, okay, just, just hand it in. She turned to me, because even as a seven-year-old, she was way more mature than I'd ever be. She turned to me and said, Mr. Wedding, if it's worth doing, it's worth putting a little glitter on. <laughs> and she proceeded to go back to work. Tyson. I made Tyson say F you to his mom over the phone. <laughs> you see, one day at recess in grade two, you guys have already heard, Tyson and Carson got into a little fist fight. I don't remember what it was over, but in the process of this fist fight, Tyson yells out, F you, only the exact words. So I thought, I could yell at Tyson, but that's probably not going to have a big effect. So I told Tyson that he was going to call his mom, and he was going to say exactly those words to her on the phone. 
And as soon as I told him that, his whole demeanor changed. He became scared. Not scared of me, but we're scared of mom. (laughs) So in this meek, crying little voice, he says, Mom, I said F you. (laughs) And I could hear Leanne on the other end of the phone go, Excuse me? (laughs) What did you say? And then we proceeded to explain the situation. Now, there are a few things scarier in life than an angry mother. But Tyson took the consequence without argument, knowing that he needed to be responsible for what he did. And that's a lesson I'm going to take from Tyson, that no matter how scary a consequence might be, you need to be responsible for your actions. Paige. I first got to teach Paige through a TV screen. She was a student in Killarney, taking my digital photography course through video conferencing. Even through a TV, Paige's outgoing personality shone through. I remember Paige being in Boys of Aim for a softball tournament, and she came up to me with a huge smile on her face saying, Mr. Wedding, guess what? I'm gonna be coming to Boys of Aim school for my grade 12 year. She was so incredibly positive about the new challenge, and her bubbly nature and never-ending smile were a great addition to our school. So the lesson I learned from Paige is to always approach new challenges with positivity. Tanner, you still owe me a new phone. (laughs) You see, Tanner needed to borrow my phone in grade six to use as a stopwatch. He promised adamantly that he would be careful. Nothing's gonna happen, Mr. Wedding. I use my parents' phone all the time. You can trust me. And it wasn't five minutes later, smash, no more phone. (laughs) But with Tanner, it didn't really matter the situation. Whether he did something good or bad, he always had this sly little smile on his face and a way to make you laugh about the situation. Tanner, you taught me that having fun, making people laugh, but always seeming to do a great job can coexist. You prove this over and over again. Oh, and a little inside joke, I don't think any of your grade two classmates have ever forgiven you for spending all of our Zoo World money. (laughs) Austin. Austin was always the more serious of the Klein brothers. He had a strong competitive edge especially when when it came to his brothers, Tanner and Tyson. (laughs) This could be seen from a quiet brag about a higher mark in math in grade two, or the intensity of a wall ball game at recess. Austin always wanted to be the best amongst the boys. He knew he couldn't compete with the girls, so he didn't worry about that. (laughs) This has carried him well, as that drive and competitive spirit has helped him become an accomplished hockey player. Austin taught me that treating things as a competition can be an amazing motivator. Maddie String. From the first day I met Maddie, she cared more about her horses than she ever did school. (laughs) Schoolwork got done if she couldn't see her horses. Didn't matter how fun of a day was planned at school, horses were number one. I remember going to watch Maddie at a riding competition in Brandon and this unsure girl I saw in school disappeared. She was so strong, showed such confidence, and had such amazing control of this big animal. You taught me that with enough confidence, you can take charge of any situation. Sarah. (laughs) Sarah, you taught me that if you're willing to put in the work, then you are always capable of amazing things. Now, a lot of you might think I'm referencing Sarah's basketball, which we all know she's phenomenal at. But I really started to notice this lesson in grade six. See, we had this book report project. And Sarah read Harry Potter. Back then, she was obsessed with Harry Potter. (laughs) But she produced this board game for this book that it looked like something you would buy in a store and pay hundreds of dollars for. Even as an 11-year-old, She was way smarter than me. Carson D.H. Kindness, politeness. 
Those two words sum up Carson so well. It didn't matter what we did or how old he got. Carson's manners never wavered. I will never forget the last day of grade six. The whole class had left the room. Carson came back from his locker for no other reason and just said, thanks for teaching me this year. He melted me right there. So the lesson I take away from my time with Carson is how simple manners can make, how simple manners can make someone feel appreciated. Ethan Melmoth. Ethan, you taught me the skill of winging it. <laughs> See, in grade six, we had this thing called presentation club where the kids had to, were given a different topic and they had to do a presentation based off of that talk. Well, Ethan was not a big fan of homework. So the whole preparing the presentation could be a challenge for him. But you would think that would mean he didn't do very well. But every single time, this kid was so incredibly good at making something up on the fly, and usually it was hilarious. He'd still end up getting a good mark whether I wanted to give it or not. <laughs> Ethan Harper. In Ethan's grade 10 year, it was a connections year. For most of the year, Ethan would end up in my room at the end of the day in order to spend, working, spend time working on a game he was creating for connections. Ethan would have 30 minute conversations about the game and the things he would tell me about his computer code were so far above my head that I was completely lost. No idea. But in those conversations, you taught me about finding your passion. The excitement and joy that I saw in you as you spoke about your game was so cool to see. Aspen, you drove me nuts <laughs> with not getting your homework done in grade six. But you permanently earned my respect in grade six when on one day when you didn't have your homework finished, you told me that it wasn't done because you were helping your little brother with his. And you thought that your brother doing well was far more important than you doing well. Aspen, you reminded me of the lesson of thinking of others before myself, as you were always so willing to help others to the detriment of your own achievement. James. <laughs> See, back in grade two, James liked to brag about his pipes, <laughs> his muscles. I like to remind him that they were more like pipe cleaners. <laughs> I'm not sure your mom was positive you would get here today. <laughs> but I had full faith in that. James, you taught me that no matter how many people want you to fit a mold, you need to stay true to yourself and be happy with who you are. You didn't let people change you, no matter how badly they wanted that English assignment turned in, or how much they tried to force you to play on the volleyball team. Jersey. Jersey was the most awkward story time kid ever. I had a chair in our grade two room that I would read stories to the kids. Jersey would always run to sit right beside the teacher. But as I read the story, she would sit there and she would pull on the cuff of my pant leg over and over again. And then you would t turn around and say, Jersey, stop. And she'd go, what, I was doing that? <laughs> But what I'm really going to remember about Jersey is that over the past four years of high school, I don't think a day went by where Jersey didn't make a point of saying hi to me. I'm going to miss that daily hello. You taught me how big of a difference a simple but genuine hello can make to a person's day. Shay. Shay's laugh could be heard throughout the entire school when she found something funny. And when she laughed, you couldn't help but laugh with her. It was almost to the point where it was difficult to let Shay work in the hallways because if she found something funny, 
every teacher around would have to go and close their doors because she would start laughing and she couldn't stop. There was always so much joy and purity in that laugh. You taught me to never be afraid to express happiness. Shea Canada. When Shea first moved here, I have never had so much difficulty keeping a kid in a classroom. <laughs> Every single time I turned my back, he would sneak out of the room to go talk with kids in the lobby. <laughs> and I would have to leave class, go get him, and I would have to remind him that he needs to stay in class. And if he needed to leave, he was supposed to ask permission. To which he would always respond with, well, I didn't have to do that in my last school. <laughs> but we eventually found mutual ground when Shea realized that the mutual part was going to be doing things like I want them to be done. <laughs> Shea taught me about patience. That first month, I needed all kinds of it. <laughs> Kyle. Kyle used to love having me pick him up by his ears. <laughs> In grade two, I would grab him by the ears, he would get a hold of my forearms, and I would lift him up. <laughs> Every day, he would ask me to pick him up by his ears. <laughs> Kyle also put up with a lot of short jokes over the years. But after growing between grades 11 and 12, who's laughing now? Actually, we still are, he's still kind of short. <laughs> and I think I could still lift him up by his ears. <laughs> But character is an area that Kyle was never short on. He has always been kind, thoughtful, and hardworking. Kyle, you always took the jokes with such poise, and you taught me the importance of not taking everyone around me so seriously. Kyla, did you guys know that in grade six, Kyla wanted to be a singer? <laughs> she did an entire project about what she wanted to be when she grew up, and she even shaped the poster into the shape of a microphone. Now, this was the same kid who absolutely refused to do public speaking <laughs> and was as quiet as a mouse when you finally got her in front of a class. But she had it figured out that she could just record her voice, and she would never have to actually sing in front of people. They would just hear her. That concept of hers the idea that she can figure out a way to make a dream come true, even when there are big obstacles, is the lesson I learned from her. Jillian. So Jillian was always really famous for not really having a filter around her. <laughs> if it was on her mind, she would talk to me about it. I remember one day in grade six, Jillian stayed in for recess to help me clean the fish tanks. And out of nowhere, she says, Mr. Wedig, want to know a secret? I have a crush on Tanner. <laughs> now, this wasn't a secret at all. <laughs> Everybody knew this. But whatever. She continued to say, you know why, why I like him so much? It's because he makes me laugh. Oh my god, I can't believe I just told you that. <laughs> Jillian taught me the importance of being willing to talk to someone when you need to, and I'll miss those completely random conversations. <laughs> Aurora, the little girl with the big glasses, who would spend every recess in grade two pretending to be pets with Sarah and Regan. <laughs> this is where you first started to see Aurora's ability to take control of a situation as she always wanted to be the pet trainer. <laughs> Back then, you could barely get her to say anything. And then in high school, you could barely get her to be quiet. <laughs> Aurora has always been a kid who would put the work in to figure things out, hardly ever looking for help, but always finding a way to succeed at things, and then never looking for praise for it. She seemed to be ha just happy knowing she did a great job. This is the lesson I learned from her. 
to not need the praise of others, and to, be no, and to be happy knowing I gave it my best. Tristan. Over the last few months, I've learned that Tristan's actually become really familiar with this parking lot. Mr. Hicks told me that uh, because you weren't able to get Wi-Fi out where you lived, that you would actually travel into town, either your sisters or the school, and you would access the Wi-Fi so that you could complete your work. Now, we all heard the number of scholarships that Tristan got, so we know he did pretty well. <laughs> this just shows Tristan's commitment and work ethic, which was something I got to see firsthand in the one and only course I was able to teach him in. Tristan taught me that if you want something bad enough, then you have to be willing to do things a little bit differently. Madison Reichert. Madison's favorite classes were always show and tell. This is where you really saw Madison's character come through. I remember one day in grade two, Madison brought her little brother AJ in for show and tell. AJ was just a baby then, and she absolutely shone as she spoke about him. She was so incredibly proud to be a big sister, and I think she would have talked all day about her family had I let her. Madison, you help re remind me that there's nothing more important than family. Ariana, I was, wasn't lucky enough to have taught you. So I turned to better sources of information in your classmates and Mr. Forsythe. <laughs> your classmates wanted you to know that even though your second language was English, you were still smarter than almost all of them. <laughs> And they sure appreciated all of the help that you gave them with their homework. Mr. Forsyth wanted you to know that even though you didn't think you were important to your team, you don't realize the impact that you had on them. The lesson he learned from you is that everyone has a role on a team and no one is less important than anyone else. Aiden. <laughs> the king of cheesy jokes and one-liners. Aiden had a way of turning absolutely any conversation into a pun. <laughs> Having a serious time out in volleyball could be a challenge with Aiden, as he always wanted to make a joke. At the same time, I don't know if I have ever known someone who is so quick and selflessly willing to help anyone and everyone around him. He could be asked to do anything and you could always rely on Aiden. Aiden, you taught me how selflessly helping out others can make a big difference. David. David, you taught me in life even the little things are worth celebrating. See, this year, back in December, the high school had its yearly advisory floor curling challenge. David's team won. We let them. <laughs> But when they won, David was jumping and cheering and hugging and high-fiving anyone and everyone he could get his hands on. <laughs> I have pictures to prove it. It was so much fun watching him be so happy over such a little moment. One final lesson that I learned from this group was in grade two. One recess really early in the year, a group of the girls came in and they went to hug me. So what was my response? A football style stiff arm <laughs> to block them and then a really awkward pat on the head. <laughs> I had not long before that finished my university degree and all through university they told you, you can't hug students. It's not professional, it's not appropriate, don't hug your students. So they got a football stiff arm. <laughs> Roxy Anderson saw me do this stiff arm movement and she pulled me aside and I will never forget her advice that day. She said, as important as it is for you to teach them, it is more important for them to know you care about them. I haven't always been very good at expressing myself. 
but I hope you kids know that I have always loved you. Every one of you is responsible for a memory, and every one of you has helped me become better at what I do. And for that, I will be always thankful to you. For those that were with me as kids, I don't know if you guys remember, but any time we had a goodbye, whether it was Christmas break, summer break, or whatever, I used to tell you that you had to give me a handshake, a hug, or a high five. It doesn't feel right that I can't do that today. I can't say goodbye properly. So for now, I'm gonna say until next time. I really am going to miss you guys and you will always hold a special place in my heart. To the grads of 2020, congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Wedick. This is what we've been waiting for. It gives me great pleasure to present to you the graduating class of 2020.
I think this, oh, we still, now we got somebody else running. That's our version of musical chairs for the grads. Check. You know, I think Mr. Cleveland just wants, always wants to be a roadie. That's his, that's his next uh, venture in life. I think the grads deserve another round of applause, actually.